So we've basically recognized right now what variables are. Variables, if you don't recall, are synonymous with each other, basically. We use x, which is our variable. We generally use a letter, but you can also use something like dollar sign equals four, and then you could say dollar sign plus you know something equals something. But we're gonna forget about that because generally it's common practice to use um oh, sorry about that guys. Generally it's common practice to use a number or a letter rather instead of using a crazy symbol, mainly for the purpose that everyone can, you know, relate to the crazy symbol. X is always X regardless of where you are in the world. And any more reason than that, I have no idea. Hey, I just preach the rules. I don't make them. But um, what I said was you can make basically a declaration that x is going to be equal to something. We're going to want x to be equal to 3. So every time you see x, I want you to replace it with 3. You can even go so far as to say x squared plus 3, the square root of x, x, or something, you know. Actually, I'm going to want to change this to x equals 4. You'll see why in a second. But, um, you know, so basically all we're going to say is every time you see x, just automatically, don't even think twice about it, just replace it with 4. So, in this, in this um, you know, answer, in order to answer all these things, we'd be like, alright, first thing we're going to want to do is replace the, this x with 4. And we'll carry on that 4, I guess. And then the answer will be 8. We're going to want to, you know, substitute the 4 for x. And if you guys don't recall, these are exponents basically saying, you know, 4 times 4 plus 3. So then basically what we do next is, you know, since I'll teach you guys PEMDAS a little bit later. But, um, you know, for time being, just do this first. Just recognize, quote me on that. And we'll do 16 plus 3, getting us 19. So in other words, x will always be equal to a single statement. x will always be equal to 4. But, you know, x is not always going to be so easy to find. We're not going to automatically tell you guys, all right, x equals 2. Now figure out this long-ass equation. No, it doesn't work like that. Generally in pre-algebra, we have to solve for x. Basically what we're trying to say is, all right, granted x equals a number. We don't know what number x could be yet. x could be anything from 1 to infinity. Even Einstein couldn't tell you what x is right now. So I'm going to want to erase all that. So, yeah, even Einstein couldn't tell you the value of x for right now, but we're saying that there is a value of x. And I'm not going to tell you my value of x. You know, if I told you my value of x, then, you know, there'd be no reason for pre-algebra. But I will tell you this much. If you take x and if you were to add 4 to it, you would get 13. So I'm not going to tell you what x is. x could be anything in the world. But take x and add 4 to it, and you have yourself 13. I'm just going to redraw that. So we have a variable x, variable x, and if you add 4 to x, you get 13. But we still don't know what x is. So how would we figure out x? Well, if x, ah, sorry, my voice cracked. If x plus 4 would equal 13, then to find x, what would we have to do? we'd have to subtract 4 from 13. Why? Because it's like saying, I have a certain amount of candy. I have, like, you know, an undescribable, an un, like, you know, readable amount of candy. And that's fine. But if you take my candy, oh, why is it doing that? Sorry, so x plus 4 equals 13. And like I was saying, if I have an undescribable amount of candy right now and I have no idea how much candy I have but if you take my candy how many pieces of candy I have if you take my candy and you put all of Jen's candy together you'll get 64 pieces of candy and I don't know I have no idea why my thing's doing that so logically if Jen has 64 pieces of candy and we have you know an ex like you know an undescribable amount of candy what we do is we take the total amount of candy, which is 64 in this situation, and we'd simply just subtract Jen's amount. Because the 64 total amount of candy minus Jen's amount is going to be whatever candy that we have. So in a similar manner... Oh, I'm just going to... So in a similar manner, and I'm just going to use this pen a little bit. 
we have x plus 4 equals 13. We don't know what we don't know what this is, but this together makes a total of 13. What we do, we simply can just take off 4 from both sides. Well, not from both sides. Rather, we're just saying, all right, I'm just going to take off 4 from 13 because x plus 4 equals 13. We want to know x. We just simply take off the 4 x, you know, the 4 added to x that's unnecessary. So 13 minus 4 equals 9. And now, as you can see, now we understand that x will be equal to 9. x is synonymous with 9. Every time you see x, automatically put in them with 9. So let's, let's try another one. Um, let's say we don't know what uh, y is. y is another possible uh, variable. We don't know what y is, but we're saying that y plus 4 equals 7. Well, we don't know what y is, but we know that y plus 4 equals 7. This 4 is not needed. We don't need to know. All right, well, I don't know how much candy I have, but I know you and I have, you know, six, you know, it's an indescribable amount of candy. That doesn't do us any good. We want to know how much candy we have, right? In a similar manner, this doesn't do us any good. We, we understand. We're, we're, it's fine with knowing that plus 4 equals 7. But if we want to know just how much y is equal to, just subtract 4 because that's how much is being added on to y to get that denominator. So what we get after that is y is equal to 3. So we can plug in this into any location whatsoever. We can even plug it into y plus y plus 1 plus y. That'd be 3 plus 3 plus 1 plus 3. 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 plus 3 equals 10. So, as you can possibly imagine, knowing this is very important. Ne figuring that, you know, while there could be a variable, we won't always know what that variable is equal to. We'll have to do something crazy with it, like adding 4 to it to get 7, and then, you know, just to find the answer, we're going to have to take off whatever is next to the y, whatever is preventing us from knowing exactly what y is. We're going to eradicate that off our system. That way, we just know what y is. We just have the value of y. If you don't understand that, just re-watch my video. If you did, Great, check out the next part. See you guys next time.